Well, I've got my deck table set up with my spectrum analyzer in the uh, shade here and a rotor box to uh, rotate the antenna. Coffee cup, of course. All the necessary things for doing this kind of work. At one end of the yard here, I have this. Um, actually, yeah, it's a light pole for performance, is that kind of thing. And uh, at the top, I have the uh, dipole that I made using the power balance. It works at 145 megahertz, so uh, I'm going to use it for the reference antenna on this side. You can see I took the uh, cable and just ran it right up through the bottom of the uh, pipe here all the way to the top. And then at the uh, top up here, uh, I have an extension pipe to get the antenna away from the metal. Not so important, horizontally polarized, but it uh, would be in vertical polarization. But anyway, uh, since I'm using horizontal, I can just rest the antenna on a notch that's up there uh, and have the coax down, go down the center of this thing. I have a uh, another pipe that I use if I want to go a vertical to uh, mount the thing on and that way I can control it better uh, and keep it away from the metal. Right now on this side I have the uh, on the angle mounted. See it's taped off just below. Well, actually uh, that's uh, Velcro. And then about halfway down the mast and then down near the bottom here uh, we uh, have it strapped down again. And uh, you will notice uh, if you look carefully that uh, zoom in a little on it there we have two clothespins fixing the uh, mast into the rotor which is below the uh, deck level here. This is a coupler that normally would couple to a two inch pipe. Uh, right now I've got the one and a half inch pipe going inside the two inch pipe that's in the bottom. Um, and But if I was using a two inch pipe the coupler would uh, hold this firm. But since I don't have the uh, Winch pipe in there, I use a clothespin as shims to sort of hold it against the coupler to uh, keep it from rotating, rotating uh, by itself. It'll follow the, whatever the rotor does down below. On the other side, you see the two inch pipe extending down into the rotor here, and uh, it's fastened off with the clamps. And you see that it's just sitting on the flat bottom board here. I've screwed some screws in. There's one on the left, one on the right, and one in the back to keep the uh, thing from rotating, uh, the rotor from rotating instead of the pipe, <laughs> uh, and fix it in place so that it's vertical and so forth. This was a quick and dirty way of uh, doing this particular task for this purpose. Notice also I have the uh, cables and stuff uh, laying on the ground here. Anything that's laying on the ground, of course, is not going to reflect any more than the ground does, so that's uh, why that works. That's the rotor cable and the uh, coax is going through there, too. And uh, that's what we're going to use for our tests. Uh, you will notice, however, that I've got the uh, omni angle down below the top here, and that was because I determined that I was having some reflections either from the ground or from the wires over here. And uh, I was just experimenting to see if that was the case, that uh, if I go up and down with the antenna a little bit, I should see the thing go up and down in level, which indeed is what happened. And I'll show you why that uh, was done, because uh, we have the dipole and this antenna compared directly. and. Um, this antenna should have less than dipole gain. It actually has a little bit more as seen in this test range. So I think I'm going to have to repeat this up in the front yard at some point where I don't have as much clutter around it. Uh, by the way, uh, between the uh, table here and the tripod over there is 15 feet, which is uh, what about four wavelengths, something like that. It's uh, 
I found that at uh, three wave, um, at three meters between these two, which would be a normal test range for FCC purposes, not for antennas so much as uh, radiation stuff, that we uh, get too much variation in the signal, especially with this particular antenna because it's off center. So the, as it's in the front, it would be one gain, and as it goes around the back, of course, it's further away by a significant portion of uh, the distance between the two. It affects the uh, gain measurements. So I'm not going to make gain measurements except in a relative basis out here in the backyard. The first result that we have here is the omni, uh, not the omni angle, but the dipole with the power ballad. As you see, it has uh, 14 dB or better uh, return loss from 140 to 153 and um, about 15 dB from 144 to 148. The second dipole has a little different pattern here. This is with the broadband ballot. It's a 140 to 153 again, but it's only about 10 dB at 140. However, it's 19 and 16 from 144 to 148, and 15 dB at 153, actually almost 154 megahertz, so pretty good. And that same antenna um, with the broadband ballon is... Uh, is through the cable to the uh, broadband ballon and it's showing more uh, like what I'd expect because the antenna should be around 75 ohms and that uh, would put it at one and a half to one over that range and that seems to be what we're seeing in, in this particular uh, sweep of the uh, thing through the 50 feet of coax and this is the um, gain of that antenna over 141 to 154, so you can see that it's a fairly broad band on the gain curve. I'll mention that it's a 1 dB down at 141, and well, actually 142 and 154.6, um, but that's actually only a half dB down per antenna. The next thing I did was to put it at uh, a single frequency at uh, 144.250 which is where this, uh, where the uh, omni angle is also um, tuned. And uh, here's the results. As you see, it looks like a dipole pattern, although there seems to be on one end a little bit of a uh, reflection uh, at low levels. The gain curve for the omni angle from uh, 141 uh, and a half to 146 and a half, roughly, uh, looks like this. And uh, you'll notice the 1 dB points are at 143 and 145.5. And, um, and those are real numbers because uh, the curve be uh, of the uh, dipole is very flat over this uh, range. So there's no uh, change due to the uh, dipole on the other end. To prove my point, um, here's the 144 to 145. Uh, frequency response of the reference dipoles together as you see there's not much uh, variation over that whole range so again that should be uh, good numbers for the uh, omni angle as far as its uh, frequency response. I also rotated the uh, omni angle antenna. This is what I got. It uh, goes from well, let's see the 29 down to 24, no 25 so about 4 dB overall variation around the uh, circumference of this antenna as, as we rotated it. And finally, uh, here's the two curves of the omni angle and the uh, broadband ball and dipoles compared as rotated and at the uh, same frequency. Um, you'll notice that the omni angle seems to have more gain, but I think this is because it uh, doesn't have a nulls off the uh, sides. And so it does um, get some reflections off those wires I showed earlier. But we're going to try this again in the front yard where it doesn't have that kind of problem and see what happens. But for the moment, now that it started raining again, I uh, think we'll stop here and I'll let you know what happens later.